Hey y'all, it's Laura, and welcome back to Scrap Lift Sunday. Today, Miranda and I are lifting this gorgeous layout by Sarah Scraps, and it has a lot of stamping in the background. Now, if you're familiar with Sarah's layouts, she does a lot of stamping, and so I was really excited to try this and actually use some of my stamps. So the two stamps that I'm using are both from Felicity Jane. One is called June, and the other one is called Ginny. They do come with their kits, but I believe you can get them separately in the shop, I think. They do also happen to have a sale on right now, and I may have picked up some goodies. <laughs> That's primarily the way that I get a lot of things in my stash as I wait till the kit clubs or a lot of the manufacturers have big sales, and then I buy things for much, much cheaper. So the Catherine Pooler inks that I'm using today are All That Jazz, Juniper Mist, Be Mine, and Rockin' Red. So these are some of my favorite colors from the Catherine Pooler ink collections. A couple of things to keep in mind with these inks that I have discovered. You need to test them out on the cardstock that you normally use to scrap with or to make cards with because I find it reacts differently to different types of cardstock and even if they seem similar, sometimes the just the colors appear differently on different cardstocks and I'm not sure why that is. It is a dye ink and it is water reactive, which is nice. Uh, the colors are very saturated as you can see and I really enjoy using them, but like that's my little warning though. Make sure that you swatch them out onto the cardstock that you intend to use for scrapbooking. That way you will see what their true color is. Another little thing to note is the color that you stamp on wet is not going to be the finished color dried. It does change slightly. Uh, as it dries and personally I think it gets a little bit closer to the color on the lid as it dries. Now I am just kind of going back and forth between the colors and I'm creating a bit of a color blocking. So I have red across the top, pink and then teal and then navy. And so I'm taking each of the stamps that I want to use and just going ahead and doing each color. So. This one says fun, fun, I'll do it in navy, I'll do it in teal, then pink, and then red. That way I'm not having to pull the stamps off and on as much. I can just go ahead and, you know, wipe them off and re-ink them. And for me, that's just a whole lot easier. Made the process a little bit faster. It was not a fast process, guys. This was a very slow process. <laughs> it took me a couple of hours uh, to do this entire right side of the page, but it was kind of fun to do, and it really, really encouraged me to get a little bit more practice in stamping. Now, is every single stamp perfect? No, absolutely not. But it doesn't really matter when you're doing them en masse like this or in a big uh, collection of stamping. It's not as noticeable when you do make a mistake. And I was concentrated more on putting the words in such a way that they puzzled together and not as concerned with what the words actually said. Because there's going to be a ton of words on this right side and no specific title is really going to stand out anyway. So I'm just kind of picking different fonts, picking different shadowed or uh, hollowed centered ones, different sizes, and just sticking with my color blocking. Now I did get a little bit experimental and start putting a couple of stamps on the block at once instead of just one, and that made things go so much faster. <laughs> now what I could have done was to use my slightly larger stamp block and to puzzle together a whole section and then inked it up real well and bam, I could have done a whole section at one time. I didn't do this for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't think that I would be able to get nice clear stamping that way. I, I was fairly certain that either some of them would be only partially inked or some of them would be taller than other stamps and I was concerned that it wouldn't sit just right and would look spotty. And I was really trying to avoid that because these colors are so vivid and brilliant that I really wanted them to stand on their own on this layout. Now I am kind of skipping between the inks you may notice and doing a lot of wiping off camera 
just to make this go a little bit faster. Now I'm not gonna leave the entire stamping process on here, because like I said, it did take me two hours, but I wanted to leave it enough so that you could see how I'm puzzling together the different stamps. And at some point I started double stamping. So I started taking a stamp and using it more than once in each color. And that was largely with the smaller stamps that are not gonna be as noticeable. Whereas these larger ones, I figured you would, you would see it. So with the smaller stamps, Stamps, I did go ahead and stamp them twice, then wipe it off and put on the next color. I didn't worry too much about coming all the way across with the pink because a lot of that was going to be covered up by my main large photo. Uh, now my photos today do happen to feature our three dogs, one of which has since passed away. This, these photos are from about four years ago. And I thought it would be a nice little spin on Sarah's layout to do three photos instead of just the one large photo. So I have one large photo of my dog, Emma, who I adopted from our local animal shelter. And then I have the two pictures in a smaller size of Gracie and Strider. Now Gracie is a dog we adopted from my mother. She is a Pekingese and Poodle mix with a lovely little underbite. <laughs> and Strider was a rat terrier freeze, I think it's called, mix. But he's he's quite the, he was quite the character. I was showing you there my inky fingers because it is my personal belief that if you have not dipped your fingers into the ink at least once, then have you really been stamping? <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you, <laughs> I do this every single time that I stamp. I always get the ink all over myself, whether it's just black archival ink or it's these nice, bright, fun colors. Doesn't matter. I'm going to get them everywhere. It's going to happen. I've accepted it. I just end up with blue fingers for about two days and that it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All part of the process. So I am using this 6x6 paper pad. I believe it was from We Are Memory Keepers. And it's one that I included in my August stash kit. And that's mostly what I'm going to be using today. Though I do reach into my actual stash a little bit on this one. Because I wanted to use some epoxy flare from Scrap and Happy Studio that had dog themes on them. I don't scrap a ton of pictures of my dogs. Uh, but when I do, I try to pull in those dog themed items to make sure that they get used. Otherwise, they just sit in my stash and I forget about them. So better to go ahead and pull them in than to uh, leave them to sit. Now I'm using the 6x6 paper pad uh, entirely for my paper because I don't need a big block of paper on this background. I've created my own background with the stamping, which is the purpose here, is to create your own background. You can certainly use any color of inks that you want. I tried to pick colors that matched this paper pad as closely as possible. I don't have a ton of inks. I think I probably have 15-ish or so, 12 to 15, something like that. And so I just try to make do with what I have. I don't really want a ton of inks, so I tried to pick colors that I used most often. Now just grabbing some scraps here to create a panel for behind my two photos that go on the left side. Now as you saw at Sarah's layout up at the very beginning, she also had a panel of papers here on the left side, though she chose to use hers to hold her title. I wanted to add additional photos. It just felt really empty to just have a title off here to the left side to me. Uh, so I picked three photos instead of one because why not? So my clustering on this one is going to be largely diagonal and it's going to be kind of opposite diagonal. So on the two photos on the left, I'm going to have a cluster at the top left where the photos meet and the bottom right. And then on the larger photo, I'm going to have a cluster across the bottom and then up at the top right. So they're kind of opposite of each other, but I think it works pretty well. This is definitely not a design that I use super often. I don't tend to separate my photos a great deal on the page. Sometimes I do grid layouts and those definitely have a certain amount of separation to them, but otherwise I generally keep my photos clustered together as one big focal image on the page. So this is definitely a little bit different and I love to experiment. I love to play around with my scrapping and see what I can do to uh, find new ways to do things, new ways that I like or just want to try. I did bring in all 
all of my sticker sheets and sticker book trying to get some of those things used. I pulled in several floral clusters from this Jen Hadfield sticker sheet. And I also pulled in my larger Echo Park sticker sheet, which I'm having some trouble using this month because it's very heavily little girl themed. And while I do have two little girls in my house, uh, this is more baby little girl. Like it's a little bit just too young for them even kind of. So I'm gonna have to get creative and maybe find some photos of uh, any of my three girls when they were younger or maybe my niece and do a few layouts to try to use up some of those stickers. But I'm doing pretty well with this Jen Hadfield one. I wanted to pull in some of this yellow because I think it pops really nicely next to the colors in the background and the stamping and it does appear in some of the papers. And so if that was a way I could kind of tie the two together and also help the photos to stand out. Now you'll notice these photos are fairly dark and because they're so dark, they do draw your eye in despite all of the bright, bold things that are happening around them. Because they're so dark is why I chose to use bright colors. And it's the idea of playing with contrast. So light contrasts to dark. And so when I have dark photos, I tend to use light, bright layouts so that your eye is drawn immediately to what's different, which is of course the dark photos. And so that is a totally intentional choice and something to consider in your own scrapping. Now, as you can see, I put a word phrase here from my sticker book on the bottom of the larger photo with a cluster. And I've created a second cluster up at the top. And this really helps to kind of bookend the side of the layout. And so then it leads your eye automatically to the other two photos because this feels like a very heavy right side uh, barrier and then it kind of pushes your eye to the left to the other photos as well. So now that I've got my clusters pretty much in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off some of the word phrases with a little fishtail banner. So that's just cutting a V into the edge of those word phrases. I've pulled out my little container of epoxy flare from my little cart that I keep next to my desk, and I'm just gonna flip through them and try a few different things. I considered using these kind of dark pink ones that actually matched my stamping quite well, but I end up going with the lighter pink to help the top in better with the Jen Hadfield pieces instead because a lot of them are going to be tucked in or added on top of the Jen Hadfield pieces and I thought they worked a little bit better. So there I'm going to switch it to a slightly lighter pink that ties in a little bit better with those embellishments. So bring in uh, more little bits and pieces from my August stash kit. These little puppy stickers haven't gotten used much, which I knew was gonna happen. I got these in a grab bag of sorts and they're not entirely my style. There's quite a bit on here that I do like, little rainbows and bows and stars and things like that I'll definitely use. But there's some other things that, you know, maybe, maybe not, like hot air balloons. I might find a place for hot air balloons, but it's not something I'd immediately, immediately reach for. So here are the little word phrase stickers. I think I just pulled off one of these. Yes, I used it kind of like a tab up at the top right of the page, just for something a little bit different. And then of course, enamel dots, because I am desperately trying to use up as many of enamel dots from my stash as I can, because I've kind of lost interest in them. And so I generally try to use those things up first, so they're not sitting in my stash being ignored. And if I can feel like my interest is fading in that item, in that product, then I really try to use it up as much as I can first. Now I'm gonna bring in my T-square ruler to add some journaling lines, and then I'll do some splattering. Now for my scattering, of course, you use the enamel dots and the tiny puffy stickers. Splattering is going to be with Nouveau Drops to do some controlled splatter, and then with some Heidi Swap Color Shine, to do some uncontrolled splatter. This was such a fun layout to do and I really enjoyed it. Be sure to check out Miranda's layout as well. Until next time, bye y'all.